when I talk to people that's, you know, said their, their first impression on me coming out to the Nanimo, they said, you know, I, I was a punk. He definitely needed a change and he was looking for it and uh, we're just grateful as an organization ended up being with us. For every one of them, and, and Andrew too, we promised their parents we were going to take care of their kids. The whole team became like, not just a team, we became like a family. These people just took so good care of me and embraced me and, and you know, they, they brought me in and really, really made me feel like I was uh, part of something. When Andrew Harris grew up in Winnipeg, his family consisted of just two people, himself and his mom, Carlene. Well, my mom was, uh, she's a great woman. She, she worked hard and, uh, you know, sometimes she had two jobs just to, you know, support me, keep me in sports. And in a, in a way, I kind of feel like I raised myself a little bit by, my, by myself just through my friends and influences around me. Those influences were not always positive. I was uh, hanging around the wrong group of guys sometimes and, you know, just doing the wrong things, making the wrong decisions. And, you know, that was one of the reasons, too, I, why I wanted to get out of Winnipeg. And, and again, just start, start fresh and, and uh, just get some more positive influences in my life. Along came Matthew Blocker, known as Coach Snoop. Blocker met Harris on a recruiting trip for a new junior football franchise, the Vancouver Island Raiders. I guess my first impression was uh, he's, uh, he's a pretty cocky little SOB. You know, I don't know if he had a whole lot of uh, male influence in his life, uh, you know, at a young age and through. And, and um, so, you know, you start to, uh, I guess, believe in just yourself and yourself only, and that's who you trust. Andrew decided to place some trust in Coach Snoop. In fact, it was enough to leave Winnipeg for Nanaimo at age 17. Right off the jump, he was like a brother. You know, he took me in, let me stay at his house, you know, sleep on his couch. I'm super close with all his, uh, his kids and, and his wife, and they're my second family. He started to believe and trust in me, and, and I think from that it allowed him to be able to express everything that was going on in his mind and in his heart, and then also his goals started to happen. While Coach Snoop became the brother Andrew never had, team owner Hattie Abassi took on the role of father. Well, Hattie just opened up a lot of doors for me uh, as far as getting a job and basically gave, gave us a paycheck for going to work and, you know, held us accountable to show up to work and, and go to practice and, and, you know, pay your bills and, you know, he, he forced you to become a man. Even at 17 years old, he was a grown man. Like, he had learned to speak and he knew what it takes to be honorable and be respectful and, and just be a man, you know, like he had grown so fast, you know. Hattie believed in Andrew enough to persuade the BC Lions to put him on their practice roster. When he brings him to you, it's more like uh, he's the father, not the, you know, the owner or the manager. You know, I think Hattie created a program uh, in the Nanaimo to uh, make junior football slightly different than maybe what was across Canada. The biggest thing is my, my first year on the practice roster, they, they let me practice here and, and go back and forth, so um, it, it was crazy, you know, I'd, I'd wake up at uh, 8 o'clock here, um, practice all day with the, with the lines, go to meet my meetings and stuff, and then jump on the float plane, go over to the island, and then I'd ferry back over at 9 o'clock and, and get back, back home at like 1 o'clock, and that was, my, that was my daily routine every day. His junior team and his teammates were still extremely important to him, and his goals that were important to him. And he wanted to win championships. We're very fortunate for that, but it just says a lot to him about his character, I really believe, and, and about his heart. This is the last quote, uh, just before the last game he played for us in the national championship. Andrew texts me this message, and I've saved it, and I'll most probably have it for the rest of my life. Thank you, Hadi, for turning me into a warrior. And I promise we will all play like one today and get you to raise the cup again. One more time, love you, love the city, let's get it. The journey that I went on with those five years playing with them, it was absolutely amazing and um, definitely one of the biggest highlights of my life for sure.